Hello, people. How are you doing today? It is Makeda Valletta, also known as the Renaissance Amazon. And I'm live on IG. Um, I will save this and repost it to my YouTube. So for those of you who <clears throat> follow me, make sure you follow me on all my Instagram pages, all my YouTube pages, because I don't always post the same things everywhere. <clears throat> In case you're unfamiliar with me, um, again, my name is Makeda. I'm a native New Yorker, um, currently live in Chicago. I am um, very much into history, anthropology, culture, okay? I'm American, and I grew up in, um, around, I grew up in New York City around people from all around the world. And so today I wanna talk about the complexities of immigration, okay? Because I find that there's often a very one-sided story on this topic, and it's a bit annoying, okay? Um, so there's some things that I feel like, you know, I'm a critical thinker. I believe in critical, critically thinking. I believe in dealing with facts. I believe in looking at different perspectives, okay? I also believe in being respectful um, of people in their land, especially when you're there. And so I'm going to say that, you know, it's very interesting because I grew up in New York City around people from all around the world who were always very proud of where they came from, okay? I have seen more Caribbean flags and flags from other countries than I have American flags in New York City, okay? Um, I myself, my family, we don't even wave around American flags, okay? Um, in New York City, the West Indian Day Parade, the Puerto Rican Day Parade, every parade for everybody, probably the Irish, everybody's parade is way more packed than the African American Day Parade. And for those of you who know me, know that I don't like the term African American, okay? Because to me, African-American refers to people with one African parent and one American parent, like Obama, or it refers to somebody with two African parents, okay? And they might have been born here. So I don't identify as African-American. I identify as American, Black American, uh, Indigenous American, <laughs> Maroon, you know, I I'll use Afro-American, okay? But I can't say the term African-American. If you think about it, Nobody says African Jamaican. Nobody says African Haitian. Nobody says African Brazilian. Nobody says African Cuban. And all those countries are a lot more African, way more African than America, okay, and blacks in America. So they don't even say that. Um, they, speak, um, they speak African languages in Cuba and Haiti and Brazil. And somebody in my feed said, if they're so proud, why don't they go back home and make it better? I say the same thing every single day. I say the same thing every single day. Listen, I love Haitians, okay? Love Haitian people. But I always say they are the proudest people who run from their countries, right? They run like crazy. I'm like, you're so proud, but you're not there. Like, I, and then as a black American, if we say, if I say I'm proud to be American, if I say I'm proud to be American, it's like it offends people, okay? Um, people love that term african-american makes me want to throw up me too but in harlem they call it the african-american day parade which i hate but i'm going to tell you so it's the black americans nobody goes to that parade nobody even knows that parade happens okay and this is our country and i feel like if we were to move because the neighborhood i grew up in i grew up in the border of harlem and washington heights my neighborhood is heavily dominican there are dominicans who owned businesses for all of upper manhattan they own like all the businesses they only hire each other, okay? So it's not like they're running businesses and they're, they're like making a conscious effort to hire Americans. No, they don't. And that's true of every immigrant group. It could be the Chinese, it could be Africans, it doesn't matter. And it's not just New York. When you go into businesses that are owned by people from, that are owned by foreigners, they only hire their own people. They are not in America saying, making a conscious effort about, you know, they can have a business in the hood. They're, you know, there's foreigners with businesses in every single hood in America. And they see people struggling. And they don't say, oh, let me try to hire people from the community. But yet, when black Americans and even white Americans, okay, move to um, other countries and open up businesses, they make a conscious effort to try to hire locals, okay? 
I don't see any groups doing that here in America. And not only that, but a lot of times they discriminate against us. Okay. So as a black American, what one thing, you know, that a lot of black, um, uh, black immigrants to understand is one of the reasons why the major reason why you're able to even come to this country is because of the fight that black Americans made to change the laws. A lot of people complain that Donald Trump, oh, he only cares about the brown and black immigrants, not the white ones. And while that may be true, the U.S. had a very racist immigration policy in the past, and black Americans fought to change that. Only for Caribbeans and Africans to come here and look down on us and talk about us and call us lazy. And there's no way we could be lazy and we've accomplished what we've accomplished on this land where we're a sheer minority. Meanwhile, you have Haiti, you have Jamaica, you have a lot of black islands and countries that has not uh, achieved what we have. And we are a minority here, okay? And so, yes, the U.S. government has done things to other countries, but the U.S. government has done the same thing to black Americans. We've been robbed over and over again by the U.S. government. Our towns have been burned down. We've had all kinds of attacks. But what we didn't do was jump on boats and flee by the millions, okay? I'm not going to say there's no black Americans who've ever left the country. Of course there are. But we didn't, there's no like huge black American population in any country. There's not several countries, like there's several countries with a bunch of Jamaicans, okay? Jamaicans are another one. They're so proud to be Jamaican. And I've been to Jamaica, okay? And when I went to Jamaica, I was like, I don't want to hear Jamaicans say anything. Because one thing I'm going to say about being in the U.S. and being in New York is that I heard so many people from other countries always talk about how great their country is. And my country this, my country that. Like, their country's so great. And you go there and you're like, I'm not impressed. And please don't say anything. I don't want to hear you say nothing about America, okay? Um, because, first of all, it's disrespectful to immigrate to somebody's country and then look down on them and talk bad about them, okay? Okay. Um, I had an ex who was black American and um, his mother was black American from New York. His father was Nigerian. His father left Nigeria and never looked back. Okay. Never went back, never went back, nothing. But he, and he married a black American woman and had three kids with her, but he would constantly talk bad about black Americans. So it's like you married a black American, had kids with one and you live in this country. And the only way you're even able to be here is because of us. So for me, I don't like this rhetoric that, you know, first of all, people want to put all Americans in one bucket because the U.S. government, the U.S. government and the military and what they're doing does not represent all Americans. OK, they don't represent the people. And whatever the government and the military is, do, is done to your country, they've done similar things to black Americans. OK, and we don't have any place to run. OK, there's no place that there's black Americans who are living in war zones right now. There's no place that we can run. There's no place we can run and people are going to give us, you know, free stuff and, you know, no place. Okay. So what I don't like is the fact that you have um, people who immigrate to America, but then they still talk mess about America. And it's like, you're talking ish about this country, but you're here and then you love your country so much. So why are you here? And with Haiti, it's like, and this is coming from love because I have mad love for Haitians and I made so many videos about it, but it's like your country can't get better if you guys run. And then, you know, I see so many Haitians in America who, you know, when this whole situation in Haiti is a mess, and I've been to Haiti, okay, I've seen it with my own eyes, it was a mess in 2010, okay, so, and yes, the US and France has done stuff to Haiti, but Haitians have done stuff to Haiti. And I don't see a fair conversation about that. Right now, what's going on in Haiti where you have gangs terrorizing people, they can't blame the U.S. and France for that. Nobody told you to pick up weapons and terrorize your own people. Nobody told you to go um, assault young girls, okay? You can't blame the U.S. and France for that, those kind of behaviors. And if you're upset with what's going on in your country, why would you do that? Why would you be trying to attack the people who are coming to help? There is a documentary on Netflix about this white American man who quit his good government job to go try to stop sex trafficking in Haiti. That was happening with kids. And in the, in the, um, he, and he himself had like six of his own kids. Okay. And I don't see any Haitians. Where were the Haitians who were trying to stop this? And when he went to Haiti and was talking to them about it, they, they didn't even, it was almost like they had an embarrassing look on their face because the officials in Haiti know that was happening. They wouldn't do anything to stop it. 
When I went to Haiti, there's several orphanages, okay? There's, there's orphanages everywhere. I've never seen anything like it. There are hungry kids running around begging everywhere. What are the Haitians who love Haiti so much, who are in America doing well? What are they doing for Haiti? I've been in Miami and met Haitians and never been to Haiti. I'm like, it's right there, but you're waving a Haitian flag. And, you know, so, and, and, and even like the neighborhood that I grew up in in um, New York, it's like when my parents moved to that neighborhood in the late seventies, they were discriminated against, against Dominican landlords who wouldn't rent to them because they were American. But yet we're in America. If you look on a map now, my part of New York, it says Little Dominican Republic. People will come to America. There's Little Haiti and Miami. Little Haiti and Miami used to be a black American. It was a historic black American neighborhood that became Little Haiti. So I wonder would other countries be offended if Americans moved there by the hundreds of thousands and said, this is Little America. And then we had waving our flags all day long. Then we had, then we're owning businesses for blocks. And we only hire Americans, okay? We don't hire any of them. We don't think about it. And then we want to have an American Day Parade too. Other countries would be outraged, outraged. And when Americans immigrate to these countries, they bring their own money and their own resources. <laughs> like they don't, Americans don't move to Africa and the Caribbean and try to get a job. They have their own businesses. They're bringing their, so I, but what I see with a lot of foreign people who come to America, they, uh, are really focused on back home. They're focused on sending money back home, doing everything for back home. They don't have a consciousness of how they can help America, how they can help Americans. They have this idea that, oh, all Americans are rich. Even, at, e even as an American, when you travel to a lot of poor countries, everybody tries to scam you. Everybody tries to scam you. Americans, we don't do that to people. If we realize that you're foreign, we don't say, oh, let's change the price and try to rob this person because they're foreign. That's not the culture here. But any other country I've been to where it was kind of poor, all the, you know, any African country, Caribbean country, everybody knows that they know you're not from here, they're going to give you a higher price. Okay. So we don't even do that to people, but yet there's all this negative talk about Americans, 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 Americans. And as if like, we don't ever help. <laughs> okay. When you have American doctors and stuff who will go places like Haiti and go places like to African countries and work, you know, and volunteer their time and their services. I don't see anybody doing that here. There are plenty of Caribbean African trained doctors in America who they don't, I don't see them like making conscious efforts to do that, you know, or even ones who came from another country, you know, maybe Cuba, you know, so it's like, so now with that being said, I can't stand this narrative of, oh, immigrants are doing works at work that Americans don't want to do. That narrative gets under my skin. Okay. Because first of all, now my mother's a labor organizer, okay? My mom's a union organizer. And so I grew up with, around labor unions and, and, and workers' rights and, 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 and looking at how people negotiate and organize to get fair wages and fair working conditions, okay? And a lot of times you have immigrants who come over and they're willing to undermine that. They're willing to work for less. They're willing to work in conditions, working conditions that Americans would never because we have negotiated and fought and worked, okay, to change that. So when we change the bar and work for better standards and better pay, and then you have people who are, who are coming in and willing to do it for pennies, they're willing to work in the worst conditions because they're so desperate to be in America. I just, you know, got a master's degree. When I thought about doing a doctorate and doing scientific research, it's like, I actually was just talking to a PhD you know, in Chicago where I live now. He was my Uber driver and he was, he was American and he was talking about, you know, he got his PhD over a decade ago, but he was talking about how low the pay is now because, you know, fellowships don't happen as much anymore. And there's so many foreign students who will work for so little and it's because they want to stay in America. I don't know how it works because I don't, I've, my family didn't immigrate here. So I don't understand how that, all that stuff works. I just know that there are people who come as students and they want to stay in the country. So they have to stay in the program. So therefore, and I've always noticed that the U.S. seems to, the U.S. seems to um, prioritize or, or, or what is it? Not prioritize, but the U.S. U.S. universities seem to have a preference for foreign students. So they'll give scholarships to foreign students like crazy. I know so many Africans who got a uh, free ride in school. And when really no black American should be paying for school, no black American should be paying for school. 
We shouldn't be paying taxes neither. We're old. They can give us reparations that way. Free degrees and no taxes, okay? Um, nobody's giving us handouts. So this, this whole, this, and I can't stand this narrative. I, I talked about this in the DNC video. This narrative that, um, oh, immigrants are here to work. They're here to work, and, and the U.S. economy would collapse without them. Oh, would they? So if they're here to work, and if the U.S. economy would collapse without them, why are all these U.S. cities spending billions of dollars to house them and feed them? And in Chicago, I see lots of Venezuelans and people begging, okay? And Chicago's homeless problem is not that bad. It's not like L.A. and Baltimore and Philly. Um, but there are homeless people here. And there are illegal immigrants who are getting things that homeless people can't get in Chicago, okay? That's dead wrong. Now, to act as if, and over the years, I've known so many people, especially white liberals, okay, who act as if America, America can just absorb as many immigrants forever. You know how many people immigrate to this country every year? I remember when I was a kid, New York City was unique in the sense that it was so diverse. That's not unique to New York anymore. Every city in town in this country is diverse. Every city in town in this country has a bunch of East Indians, a bunch of Chinese, it's a lot of times a bunch of Africans, like a bunch of Chicago has a bunch of Eastern European immigrants. So every city is like that now. Um, and I remember talking to a friend of mine who his family came here from Honduras. And I was talking to he's one of my best friends. And I said to him, you know what? This is like a few years ago. I was like, everybody I know in the U.S., I don't care where they come from. I don't care if they're from West Coast, East Coast, down South, North, middle of the country. I don't care if they're from the city, the country, the town. Every single body I know in the U.S. is always complaining that wherever they're from is more crowded than it used to be. Everybody. They could be in a small town and be like, this town used to not be this crowded. Or this over here used to not be, everybody's complaining. And I remember I said to my friend, why is it that everybody said, this is a few years ago, okay? I said, why is it that everybody always says that where they're from is more crowded than it used to be? I wasn't understanding that. And my friend said, immigration. And I said, you know what? I hadn't thought about that. But it is. Because the U.S. has been taking in hundreds of thousands of millions of immigrants every single year for years because of this narrative that America was founded on immigrants, which I can't stand, okay? Or America was built by immigrants. No, it wasn't. America is a beautiful land that is a special land. To me, America is the motherland. I don't consider Africa the motherland. People can consider what they want, but to me, it's over here. This land is special. And no offense to Africa, but they barely have flowers, okay? Like, I need to be in the land of flowers. <laughs> My bloodline is Florida, okay? Flowers. There's lots of flowers in South America. Lots of flowers, you know, growing in the Caribbean and stuff like that. So, but something special about North America. And it's not because of the white colonizers. It's because of the people who've been here. The people who've always been here that helped put the, the work into making this country such a beautiful and lovely country. And the history of this land has been welcoming from the beginning and it has been to our detriment. But the colonizers aren't to thank for that. Even the U.S. government is based off the Iroquois Confederacy. It's coming from the indigenous people who are already here. And so you can't just not give credit to the people who've been here. And even when it comes to black Americans, a lot of us, most of us, were already here. Okay. During, this, during the transatlantic slave trade, the smallest amount of Africans got brought to North America. Way more Africans got taken to Haiti, to Jamaica, to Brazil, to Cuba, okay, way more. Colombia, very small percentage got brought to this big land in North America. And a lot of American Indians were enslaved on this land. And the people who come from this land are copper complected. They're not light, bright, Chinese-looking people, okay? So this idea of a Native American, you always see this one image, but also all... America, all people who are indigenous to this land don't look the same, just like all Africans. Everybody from the African continent don't look the same. Everybody from the American continent does not look the same, okay? Now, all day, like, because I, I know that I've heard, um, I grew up in New York City, but I did not grow up around Haitians. I grew up around Dominicans, Puerto Ricans, um, some Jamaicans, um, one Trini American girl, Jews, that, that was like the bulk of my surroundings, right? And um, I have heard people all my life, like when I was a kid, my parents used to take me to the West Indian Day Parade in Brooklyn, which happens on Labor Day. My parents took me to that parade. I'm not West Indian, but they took me, you know. 
I grew up among Caribbean people. It was all good. Now, there was a time when I was in high school where I felt like a minority because I felt like, where's the Americans? I felt like I was the only person that was from America. In New York, people will downplay you like, like you're not special because you're not from uh, some Caribbean island. I can't tell you how many people have said to me in New York, oh, I thought you were Jamaican or Caribbean because you look exotic. And I'm just like, have you been around this country? Some of the most exotic women I've ever seen in my life has been right here in North American soil, okay? I have been to Jamaica, okay? And most of them look like Shaba Ranks. I'm just being serious. But if you go to Atlanta, I'm not saying there's not gorgeous Jamaicans, but I'm saying like a lot of them be looking rough. Now, you go to Atlanta, you see beautiful women everywhere. Same thing in New Orleans, same thing in Houston. But if you ask these women in Atlanta where they're from, St. Louis, Detroit, I'm from Philly. I'm from Cali. I'm from Chicago. They're from Louisiana. They're from Florida. They're from all over the United States. And they're stunning. Okay? They're banging bodies, all of that. Um, and so that's offensive to me. And I remember when I, I would be in New York at the West Indian Day Parade, I didn't bring a flag because, again, black Americans, we're not waving around flags all the time, even though we're in our own country. And even though I come from a family of fighters who actually did something to try to fight and change laws instead of running from the country because stuff got tough. Because I, no matter how tough somebody could tell me it is in their country, it was tough here too. And it's not as tough as it was because we did the work. We didn't just jump ship and flee. Right? Things can get better. Colombia used to be a way worse country. It got better. El Salvador, it got better. But it can't get better if everybody's running. Right? So you can't be a runner and leave your country and run to mine and then be talking mess about we're lazy. I definitely don't have the patience for that. And when I hear Caribbeans and Africans um, talk about getting made fun of as kids, they always talk about how, oh, when I came to this country, um, it was black Americans that were mean to me and the kids are making fun of me. If I hear that another time, I'm going to scream because honestly, those were kids. Kids make fun of everybody. If you're from down south and you move up north, they're going to make fun of you. Trust me. If you move from the north to the south, they're going to make fun of you. If you're, if you're, if you're fat, they're going to make fun of you. If you're too light, they're going to make fun of you. If you're too dark, they're going to make, it's not, you know what I'm saying? That's what happens as a kid. It's like a rite of passage. But do black American adults say that? I've never heard anybody tell me any story of a black American adult treating them bad or saying something ignorant, ever. Even black Americans who are tied to immigration don't say negative things about them. If you look on YouTube, you see a bunch of blacks in Chicago. Actually, the blacks in Chicago and the south side of Chicago are really pissed off because Chicago is a beautiful city and I talk about it all the time. But I'm on the north side of Chicago, okay? Most black Americans, and where I live, there's, there's lots of businesses. There's lots of flowers and herbs growing everywhere. And there's lots of restaurants and businesses. But that's because the neighborhood I live in is full of foreigners. It's full of West Africans, East Africans, East Indians, um, Caribbeans, Mexicans. Like, all of those live in my neighborhood, right? But when you go to the, the south side of Chicago, which is mostly black American, there's nothing over there. And when I say there's nothing, I don't know how people live over there. Like, there's nice structures in terms of buildings. But there's no businesses, no supermarkets, no nothing. Like, you could drive around all day, never see a coffee shop. Drive around all day, never see a place to get something to drink except for a gas station and drink cancer juice. Like, there's nothing over there. And it's like two cities. And I'm like, it's so obvious that in Chicago they're trying to starve black Americans. It's so obvious. I definitely couldn't do it. But then when I think about Harlem, where I'm from, I'm like, if you remove the businesses, most of the black businesses in Harlem are not owned by black Americans. Most of the black business in Har businesses in Harlem are owned by Caribbeans and Africans, okay? So if you removed all of the businesses in Harlem that were foreign, from, uh, run by foreigners, we wouldn't have anything either. Now, a good friend of mine who's from Chicago, a black American from Chicago, he moved to New York 20 years ago to Brooklyn. And he told me when he moved to Brooklyn, because, you know, he would go into Caribbean restaurants and he would ask about certain dishes because he didn't know what it was. And they would talk, they would make fun of him, like, like he's stupid because he didn't know these dishes. And it's like, I'm in my country. This is America, okay? I don't know what you eat on your island. Like, so just, and that's the vibe in New York. It's like, people think, like, if you, if somebody is not from America and you want to come to this country and you want, New York City is a great city to visit, but if you want, like, a good, authentic American city, New York City is not it. And neither is Miami, okay? New York City and Miami, it's like Caribbean culture and everybody else's culture is dominant. 
And they say ignorant things like black Americans don't have any culture. I can't tell you how many times I have heard that, been told that to my face by Caribbeans and Africans from adults, not from kids, from grown ass adults telling me that black Americans don't have any culture. Meanwhile, copying everything we do. Everybody copies us. Everybody. It's crazy when I, I might be listening to the news or I might listen to an African girl who never came to America on the internet and they use our slang. Everybody uses our slang. This dude, Adonis, who I follow on Instagram, he's over in the UK. Africans using the N word. They don't even know it came from over here. They don't even know the history behind it or that it came from over here. So, and then they're saying, oh, Americans are stupid. Americans are trying to copy off of us. Trust and believe Americans are not thinking about what people are doing in London, especially not people in New York. We're not sitting around thinking about, hmm, like how do people in London? No, New York is too fly for that. Trust and believe that we're not thinking about London. But they'll say that. And you, if you go around America, you're not going to have, have all these people just hating on London and hating on Paris, where people hate on Americans. And it's such a, and it's like, I posted a question on my Facebook page today. And I asked the question, how would other, how would foreign nations feel if Americans immigrated to their country by the hundreds of thousands, opened, owned whole neighborhoods of businesses, only hired our people, and then had an American day parade? Do you, how do you think they would feel? Do you think they would be okay with that? And I asked that question and somebody responded and said, Americans don't, America doesn't really have any culture and, um, he said, you know, it's influenced by all these other countries. And if it wasn't, it would be pretty bland. Okay. That was his response. I look and see where this person is from. He's a Haitian guy that lives in South Florida, which to me really pisses me off. Okay. Because first of all, every country, especially in the Americas was, has influences from other countries. Trinidadian and Guyanese food is basically Indian food. Does anybody say there's no such thing as Trinidadian food because you guys are influenced by India. There's no such thing as Guyanese food because all your stuff comes from India. Nobody says that to them. Jamaica has influences from Britain with their porridge that they like to eat. Okay. Um, they have influences from Britain and, and India. Nobody says in, in other places too. Nobody says there's no such thing as Jamaican food because you have in, uh, outside influences. Nobody says that. And there are people who have immigrated to many countries, not just America. Nobody says South Africa is a, is a nation of immigrants. Nobody says that. And there's lots of immigrants from all over the world in South Africa. But people still have respect for and at least acknowledge the people who've always been there, whose land it is. America is the only country where that's not the case. Where foreign people, when they, when they think about Americans, they're thinking about white people, the colonizers. And they think everybody else is an immigrant. No. Okay. The white people were immigrants. The colonizers... I know a lot of people, but there's people who've always been here, whose bloodline has always been here, whose blood, sweat, and tears is in this land. And my family, there's, there have, there's, um, my family, there, there have been people that fought in every single war in this country. And my family is people who've done the work to change laws. My family has always been here. There's no connection to any other land, okay? But this one. And when people say the most thing is American food, and I've heard that so many times in New York growing up, um, I'm like, American food is so varied and it's way more varied than any food on any island. Okay. Cause it's a huge country. What people eat in Texas is different than what people eat in Baltimore. It's different than what people eat in Seattle. It's different than what people are eating in uh, South Carolina. Okay. Or Florida. Like there's, there's so many, you know, we have barbecue. We have St. Louis barbecue, Kansas city barbecue, Texas barbecue, North Carolina barbecue. You know what I'm saying? Like, so we have so many food traditions. And so many dance traditions. And even in New York City, like I study Afro-Caribbean dance. I study um, Afro-Caribbean, Afro-South American, um, really into dances of the diaspora. But I have seen dance festivals in New York that were dedicated to the black diaspora. And they would have the flags of all the countries that they were going to represent. American flag was never on there. Black American dance, like we have so many dance forms, okay? Besides, we have Chicago Step, we have Lindy Hop, which comes from Harlem, which Chicago Step came out of. A lot of people know it as Swing. Black Americans called it Lindy Hop. We have Jukin, Memphis Jukin, Chicago Jukin. We have New Orleans Second Line. We have Bounce from New Orleans. We have Twerkin. We have um, uh, the Philly Bop. We got whatever they be doing in Baltimore. Um, there's just so many. We have how the, the black girls and the marching bands, that whole dance that they do. 
um, down south, the black girls that dance with the marching bands, that's the whole style of dance, okay? So there's many style dance forms that black Americans have, um, have created. And I could be in New York City and I see uh, all these Caribbean flags. We're going to represent all these countries, but we're, gonna, we're not going to showcase black American stuff, even though we're in America. Like, so to me, it's crazy. And you would never, when, if a black American moves to Africa or moves to the Caribbean and marries somebody from that country and has kids, they are not sitting there talking bad about the people and looking down on them. People do that here all the time. And so I'm tired of hearing, like, I, I made a video before, especially talking about Haiti, because Haiti is the backbone of so many countries' liberation, okay? The diaspora owes Haiti. I think that Americans have done a lot for Haiti. Like, you know, we hear this one side of the story about what America has done to Haiti, which is the government, right? But Americans, the people, have done a lot for Haitians and have been very welcoming to Haitians in a lot of ways. And I'm not talking about little kids making fun of you. I'm like, please don't bring up little kids, okay? The adults, okay? The adults. And I told you the story about that white American who, who quit his good government job to go to Haiti to end, um, to stop these sex traffickers who were trafficking children and Haitians were doing nothing about it. So when we have this discussion as if like, oh, Americans, we, people say this as, as it's fact all the time. They say Americans are lazy. Immigrants are doing the work Americans don't want to do. But is that, is that it? Or is it that immigrants are cheap labor? Is it that these white people want you over here because they know that they can make you work like a slave because black Americans aren't doing it. Um, Um, somebody said, what, did, okay, so, so now you're coming and undermining. I mean, you can go on YouTube and you see so many videos of black Americans who have moved to Africa and are getting robbed. Okay. They're not being welcomed to open arms at all. That whole year, the return thing, I said, that was a scam. Africans don't care about black Americans like that. They just want our money. They're like, oh, because just like Africans and Caribbeans want everybody to know that they're not all poor, they don't all live in shacks, well, Americans want you to know we're not all rich. So just because somebody's in America doesn't mean they're rich. And I grew up around people from other countries who would tell me that their family in Guatemala or whatever country they came from, their family always thought they were rich because they were in the United States. And they were always sending money back home, always sending money back home, always sending money back home. Their allegiance was to back home. And if stuff got tough in America, you know what they're going to do? Jump ship and go back home. And they're always like, oh, if this happens, I'm going to go back to where I'm from. Or when I get older, I'm going to retire where I'm from. So you're not even invested in this land. I'm invested in this land. I'm never moving out of America. I don't care. I will never move out of America. And I do love living in this country. And I am proud to be from this land. Being proud doesn't mean that you have to put anybody else down. But it's just that when... If a black American expresses that at all, it's like we get looked at as being negative. But to me, I'm like, if a, if a black Dominican could be, could be um, proud to be Dominican, like a model of negra, you're so proud to be Dominican when Dominicans really don't like you. And when I say Dominicans, I'm not talking about each individual person, but we all know how colorist Dominican public is. And she talks about that. But yet you'll rep a Dominican flag all day. Okay? Brazil. Black people are at the bottom of the totem pole in Brazil. I would way rather be black in America than be black in Brazil. Blacks in Brazil get killed by the police on a way higher. Just look it up. The, 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 the stats of how, of, of how black Brazilians are killed by the police and harassed by the police is exponentially, exponentially worse than the United States. Okay? Blacks in Brazil have nothing. But black Americans, people love to idolize Brazil, Brazil, Brazil. But where is Brazil's civil rights movement? You know what I'm saying? Like, and when you have Brazilian activists who try to do stuff, they get murked. But Americans had to go through that too. Black Americans went through that too. I was raised by people who went through that. And they didn't give up. That's the reason why they, they have zero tolerance for immigrants coming here and being an op. Because a lot, most immigrants that come to America end up being ops of black Americans. Most immigrants that come to this country are not concerned with, 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 with us. They're not going to fight for us. You know what I'm saying? But we, we are often fighting for other people. And we did do that to allow people to come here easier. And nobody talks about that narrative. Okay? Black Americans um, have been very supportive of Haitians in the diaspora. 
And every day, like there, there's a, there is a, um, and it was crazy to me that the Haitian dude in Florida said what he said, you know, about, oh, um, uh, Americans don't have culture. People are still saying that in 2024. I can't tell you how, there's a very well-known Afro-Cuban dance teacher in New York City who said that to a group of people. She was given a tour and she said, black Americans didn't really have any culture. Burna Boy says something like that. They call us lost because... I remember being in Brooklyn and I would, people ask me where I'm from. I'm like, I'm American. They're like, where are your parents from? Here. Oh, you're not, you're not from an island? I'm from the island of Manhattan. And then they'd be like, oh, you're just regular black. Oh, you guys are lost. Oh, you know, black Americans are always being told we're lost. How are we lost when we've been the leaders of the black world? How are we lost when we were the leaders of the black, uh, I'm, I'm, black um, I'm black and I'm proud movement, black is beautiful movement, the natural hair movement. How are we lost? And, and if we're so lost, why is everybody always copying us? Why are we the trendsetters for the world? Not even just for black people in the world, the world. Everybody copies our slang, our style, everybody, you know? And so growing up in New York City around all kinds of people, even where I live now in Chicago, Chicago is a very diverse city. My neighborhood in Chicago is one of the most diverse neighborhoods in the country. And I like that. I like diversity. I like being around different cultures. I do like it. Okay. But I like people to have respect. Don't come here talking mess about my people. Don't come here discriminating against my people. Because when I first moved to Chicago, I had a client. She was black American and Japanese American from San Francisco. And she was a medical doctor. And she had a lawsuit against doctors in Chicago. Cause I can't remember what country they were from. I don't remember if they're, Persian or um, Albanian. I don't know. It's one of those countries. And she said that when they come, when they get a job in this country, in the hospitals, like they get a top position, they hire all their own people and they discriminate against the black doctors. So for years, she had never had a vacation off or anything. And she actually had a lawsuit against them. So imagine being in your own country and being discriminated against, against by foreigners. No other country would stand for that. And there's no other country in the world where as a foreigner, you can just come there and jump into a top position at, at any company. If they will even hire you at all, that's not happening. And there's no country that we can run to and get asylum because life is tough where we are or because gangs are after our kids. No, there's no country we can run to for help. Our own country won't help us, but they will help foreigners. So if immigrants are coming here to work, why are we giving them things? Why are we giving them making it easy for them to get houses? And why are we giving them loans for stuff and giving them bank cards? Nobody's doing that. No country's doing that for us. They be looking at us like, you rich American, what do you want? You're not going to come mess up with our system. Like you have um, South Africa is right now complaining because Americans and maybe Canadians or whatever are going to South Africa. They don't like it. They're saying, they're saying that we're making their prices go up. So when I see people, like you have Americans who leaving America because they feel like America's too expensive, so they move to Mexico, they move into Ecuador, they move into these countries, um, and then the people in those countries are like complaining that we're making their prices go up. But it's like, okay, this is not true with South Africa because I don't see a lot of South Africans here. But when it comes to like Mexico or Colombia or Ecuador, it's like there you guys are also making our prices go up when you immigrate here like that. Okay, because first of all, you cause the wages to go down because you're willing to work for pennies and you're willing to work in unsafe, raggedy conditions that Americans won't do. And then you call us lazy because we have higher standards than that. So now you do that and you keep the wages down. Okay. Um, and then and my friend, who's also a child of immigrants, said to me, you know, he said some years ago, he felt like that's why the rent prices were going up so much. Because when he also said immigration, a lot of people from other countries, they'll live like 10, 10 in a house just so they can hustle. There'll be a whole bunch of them crammed in. So if the rent is expensive, they'll pay it because it's a bunch of them. It's a bunch of them, you know? So um, nobody talks about this. And I'm just tired of this narrative constantly. Americans are lazy. Immigrants are doing work that Americans don't want to do. This country was built in the back of immigrants. No, this country was built in the backs of black Americans, indigenous Americans, the people who cultivated this land, who've always been here, who are responsible for it. And then the immigrants came and they got to benefit from it. And then black Americans were always put on the bottom under everybody else. And I remember as a kid, 
My grandmother, who passed away about eight years ago, but my grandmother was born in 1921. And when I was a kid, she would always talk about how she was very anti-immigrant, okay? But she didn't talk bad about anybody. She didn't, like, say anything negative about people. So it wasn't that. She wasn't saying, oh, they're lazy, they're dirty. She didn't say stuff like that. But she was very anti-immigrant because she kept saying to me, they give them stuff, they don't give us. They give them things, they don't give us. She, she was saying that in the 80s, okay? And I didn't understand where that was coming from. And now it's like, it's true. I mean, we could see it right now. <laughs> there's illegal immigrants getting things that they don't give us. But there's more than that. There's scholarships. There's, you know, you look at a university. They have a certain amount of money set aside for DACA recipients. Why? All the money should be set aside for people that have always been here. Black Americans, first and foremost. DACA recipients, if your parents decide to flee the country when you was a baby, that's, what is that? Why does that, why are you entitled to something? Why? Why? You're not entitled to something over black Americans. You're not. And I feel like I would never vote for Donald Trump, okay? I'm not a Trump supporter. I cannot stand him. But I remember my dad said when he ran the first time, my dad said, if Donald Trump was not such an a-hole, I just want to curse and say whatever, but I'm like, I'm going to post this on YouTube. And I'm probably, I don't, I don't post things for monetization because I don't even really make money off the videos I post. So, but you know, when you curse, you're just, I don't know, but I curse. But um, my dad said, if Donald Trump wasn't such an a-hole, more black Americans would vote for him just because of his stance on immigration. And my dad said that when he ran the first time, because a lot of black Americans are tired of immigrants. And white liberals, white liberals, there are white liberals in Chicago, okay, in Chicago, where they're, they're, they're housing, okay, I have so much to say. In Chicago, where they are housing migrants in depleted black American neighborhoods, where they've taken all the resources away from black Americans. And now they want to house migrants there in like their one community center or their one park that will then make stuff inaccessible to the elderly, make things inaccessible to the children in that area. Okay. Um, I talked to people I know who live in the South side. They were telling me that there are Venezuelan gangs walking around lobbing people and Chicago already has a gang problem. It's not just the black people. It's the Latinos too. There's some vicious ones here. So now, and I, I remember there was a, Hispanic woman who had immigrated here and she was upset because she was like some of these people that are coming here are people we ran from in our country. Now imagine running from your country because gangs are after you and then now they're in the city way far away. You all the way up in Chicago now or you, you know, maybe you're in New York now, maybe you're in LA now and these gangs are, are coming after you that you thought you were safe from. So how does that make sense? People come here for asylum and then you let criminals in. There's no checks. You, it, it is true that there are gangs. It is true. There's a lot of Chinese um, in Maine, in California, growing illegal weed, you know, stealing people's water, poisoning the land, okay? There's a lot of that happening in many states. And it is Chinese, it is Mexicans, and it's a couple other groups of people, too, um, who are doing that, okay? They're poisoning the land, poisoning animals, stealing uh, the water, okay? And they're trafficking people. They have these illegal weed grows where they're bringing people here illegally, telling these people they're going to work on a strawberry farm, and then they have them working for free on these toxic cannabis farms. And they're doing that to their own people because Americans didn't traffic them over here. Their own people did that. Okay? When I went to Haiti in 2010, it was a, it was a, it was a weird experience because I love the energy of Haitian people. They're so lovely and amazing. But it was a mess. And we came... All of us brought two suitcases. All of us brought two suitcases to give away free things. And we were getting about to get attacked. People who were trying to help, who were driving, you know, trying to drive trucks of food, were getting attacked and killed. And that's happening now, still, in 2024. So don't tell me that, oh, America did this to us and France did it. No. Be responsible for your own actions. You are over there starving your own people. So stop with this, oh, everybody's a victim and it's because America did this to us and, and then you come to this country and then you want to talk mess about Americans. Nobody would do that. I would never be in another country and talk smack about them. Not while I'm in the country. If you want to do that when you leave, but you can't be and then you're living in the country doing that, people feel way too comfortable disrespecting this land. Way too comfortable. Um, let me see. Somebody said... That they do the jobs that most of us feel like is beneath us at this point in time. Um, mm, that's true to a degree. Because 
I see lots of them working in construction. My dad worked in construction in New York City when I was growing up. He was a journalist, but there were times he did construction. And he used to get into arguments with immigrants. And these are white immigrants who would tell him, oh, he's only here because of affirmative action. Or they would act like he has some kind of advantage because of affirmative action. And they would really talk smack to him. My dad used to be so mad. And these are white immigrants. Okay? Um, I remember when I was in college, you know, so yeah, so... So construction, the, the the construction union is very racist. In Chicago, it's even worse. I, most of the construction sites I see are all white. In the, in uh, New York, they're mixed, but there's a lot of immigrants on the construction sites. Um, I, Americans want to do construction, okay? Americans want to drive trucks. Uh, I know people who work in the trucking industry who their the amount of money that they made decreased because immigrants were coming here and doing it for less. So. Maybe they made twelve hundred dollars a load, and now you have people coming here, and they'll be like, oh, "I'll do it for nine hundred. So now the wages that people are making are getting, getting lower. I think that's happening with Uber and Lyft. They get a lot of or, or food deliveries. If you come to Brooklyn, if you go to downtown Brooklyn where the Barclays Center is, all you see is so many freaking um, like mopeds or whatever, and all of these foreigners who are delivering food. So of course they're going to do it for a dollar. They're going to do it for whatever, because they come here being so desperate. They're going to work for pennies. Americans would do all those things. I don't agree that Americans don't feel like it's beneath us. We feel like it's beneath us to do it for pennies. We feel like it's beneath us to work in bad conditions, but there have been cases in the past few years where you've had situations at certain plants where Black Americans had negotiated certain wages and negotiated certain conditions. And then that company just brought in a bunch of immigrants who just did it for less. That's happened. And nobody wants to talk about that. Instead, the narrative is, you know, oh, people say, you know, immigrants are taking American jobs as if that's not true. It is, does have truth to it. Okay. One of my, one of my friends, again, whose family came here from Honduras, he's, he's in his late fifties. He talks about how he remembers how many black cooks there used to be. In restaurants and now it's all Hispanics you know it's all foreign people but it used to be black Americans I don't think that none of those people want to cook because I see black cooks in New Orleans I think it's all of it has to do with the pay and I feel like it has to do with people coming here and willing to do things for nothing okay and that affects our wages and nobody talks about that how how is it that people think we can absorb millions of people every year and it's not going to affect us it doesn't have any effect on Americans. It doesn't have any effect in our system. And this whole, this whole thing of we, we, all, we all come from immigrants, I don't come from immigrants. And I've had so many people who have tried to tell me that I have, that I've come from immigrants and like we're the same, we're not the same. Nobody in my family had to deal with immigration. Nobody, I don't have no stories about when somebody came here from wherever, okay? We've always been here. And then to be here and to be doing the work and have people calling us lazy and, you know, and then white liberals putting up signs in the south side of Chicago saying blacks are hating on immigrants. When even when you listen to the blacks on the south side of Chicago, they say many times we're not anti-immigrant. They don't say anything nasty about them, but they're like not in our community. This is not right. And if this was happening in any other country, but if you're watching this and you're from another country, if we were doing this in your country, wouldn't people be upset? I'm sure they would. I'm sure they would. What country, somebody said it's so racist in LA with those types of jobs. Mexicans have those jobs on lock and they're not welcoming at all. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that. And that's exactly my point. A lot of immigrants, most immigrants that come to this country are ops of black Americans. And then they discriminate. If somebody can make the argument that, oh, Mexico, I mean, America was once, Mexico, I mean, you know, like, America was once a part of Mexico. Yeah, parts of it was, not all of it. And there's Mexicans all over America. And I love Mexicans, too. I'm not trying to talk bad about them. I have mad love for Mexicans. Mexicans are my homies. But I'm just trying to say that you have Mexicans discriminating against black Americans. You know, you have so many immigrant groups. So, as a, so whatever country you came from, you thought it was so tough, okay, Black Americans have been dealing with that, but then we deal with influxes of people who come here and are, are our ops. And a lot of times the people that we fought for. So that's why most, but see for me, like I'm not a Trump supporter or whatever, but when people argue that, oh, Donald Trump, he just cares about, um, he just cares about 
the black and you know the black and brown immigrants, not the white ones. And while that may be true, I can tell you one thing: I'm not fighting for no immigrants. I'm sorry, I'm not. I'm not fighting for anybody to be able to come here anymore. I feel like we are at our limits. Okay, you have countries in Europe. I mean, you got people in Barcelona spray spraying the damn tourists with water guns because they feel like. The tourists, the, the tourists are making things expensive. Well, I'm, I live in New York City. New York City is one of the most expensive cities in the world. New Yorkers are not attacking tourists because our prices are going up, okay? But I do think that a lot of Americans are getting tired, okay? Uh, legal or not, okay? Legal or not. Like, we cannot just keep absorbing all these people and then helping them too. Having cities go bankrupt. Okay, while American citizens don't have what they need. Somebody said it's like equivalent to feeding somebody else's children while your own children go while your own children are starving. And that's true. You know, that's one thing I respected about Cuba. Cuba puts their people first. And in Cuba, you can't even take a picture of the police, let alone be in Cuba disrespecting Cuba. Okay? Because no country is perfect. Every country has its pros and cons. But in a lot of countries, if you get on the internet and start saying that. Or you get on the internet and start coming at people from that country and telling them they don't have any culture and that they're, they're talking smack. A lot of countries, it wouldn't go down like that. You know, so people feel so, first of all, people feel very entitled to come to America. People feel very um, too comfortable disrespecting this land and the people on it, the people from it. And this is something I'm going to be talking about a lot because I'm tired of this narrative that immigration doesn't affect us. We can help everybody. Uh, uh, Americans are lazy and they don't want to do the work. Like if you go to New York City, everywhere where there's white people, like the Upper West Side, Upper East Side, where there's a bunch of well-to-do white people, all of their nannies are Caribbean black women. Black Americans would never. It's like we would do anything else but be a nanny for some rich white kid, okay? Caribbeans happily do it. And we're like, we because we're black in America, we know the dynamics of white people. A lot of Africans and Caribbeans don't, and they be up white people's ass in a way that black Americans are not, okay? So we're not going to do that. So you might say, oh, uh, they have an attitude. They No, 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 we're sm we know better, okay? We know better. Like all these Haitians who were so Donald Trump, pro Donald Trump, but look what look what Donald Trump or JD Vance is saying. You think Donald Trump cares about you? I have a can I know a Cameroonian dude who's a Trump supporter. Like, you think he cares about you being from Cameroon? Do you? Like you are not only are you stupid as fuck, but um you're an op now. So black Americans fought for you to come to this country only for you to be an op. We have a problem with that. We have a problem with that. Um, so I just feel like if any other country, if people from any other country express these things, people understand it. But when black Americans express these things, people don't understand it. If a white American expresses these things, people it's hard for them because people will say, oh, well, you're a colonizer. You came from the colonizers. That's a valid point when you say that about white people. But you definitely can't say that about black people who've always been here. We're not colonizers. We built this shit. Okay, we are the inventors. Motherfuckers wouldn't have lights right now, okay, if it wasn't for us. We've invented some of the most important things on this planet. We have contributed to this world. And we have helped the diaspora as well. And just like Haitians have a lot to be proud of, we do too. We 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 were, you know, it's not that hard to be the first black nation when you're when you're on an island with 99% Africans and black people, Afro-Indigenous people on that island, and you way outnumbered the Europeans. That's how you did it. It was like 20 to 1 of black, brown, you know, Afro-Indigenous against um, Europeans. In America, we were a sheer minority with a bunch of white people. And look at how far we've come. Look at how many times they burned down our towns, our banks, and stolen our kids, and done so many things to set us back. And look at where we, you know, how far we've come. And then you have black American actors who complain that, oh, we're not getting enough roles, we're not getting enough movie roles, we're not getting enough awards, and what did they do? What does Hollywood do? Goes and hires foreign black people, foreign Africans from the UK to come over here and play our roles. They play in our face. No other country would do that. Do you think Africa's gonna hire black American actors to come play their roles? Do you think Jamaicans are gonna go hire uh, black American actors? Do you think that the UK is gonna hire us to play the, the, their roles and then give us awards? They're not. 
Do you see the BET Awards? They're giving T MTV Awards. They're giving Tyler Awards. And she's mediocre, okay? In the world, in the black American world of talent, Tyler is not even talented, okay? Okay? It's like we're lowering the bar for her. But do Africans have music award ceremonies? Do they ever give us awards because they all listen to our music? They all copy, you know, our slang. Are they giving us music awards? So I feel like as black Americans, we've been the ones to open our arms to the diaspora. And we've been the ones that's welcoming. And people have, you know, played in our face, talked negatively. And I have never come across an adult black American who was talking smack about black immigrants. If you have, please give me an example because So every single time I hear Caribbean people talk about, oh, black Americans are so mean to me. They always talk about some elementary school shit. That shit doesn't matter, okay? It doesn't. I see uh, African and Caribbean adults say messed up things about us all the time. Like this, is, I, I posted something in my stories on Instagram. This Senegalese dude wrote this whole post the other day talking about black American women and how, you know, we have, you know, people over in this country have issues. Meanwhile, he lives in this country, okay? And I've been to Senegal. I could barely breathe because the air was so damn dirty. I'd be thankful as hell to be in this country. Out of all the places that I've traveled to, I was never so happy to come back on American soil as when I left Senegal, okay? So he talks about how he's, he's downing black American women. Most of us don't tell the truth about how many baby daddies we have. When I know that this man has kids in Senegal, okay? So how many kids do you have? How many, how many African men lie about their wife and kids they got back in Africa? So you're saying that about black American women? And he's saying that he gets treated like a king here. That's what he said. Oh, so you're an African and you get treated like a king here. Hmm. Perhaps it's because white people know that you're different. White Americans like to put Africans in high positions and be up on them because a lot of times Africans, uh, they don't give the kind of pushback that black Americans do. A lot of Africans and Caribbeans like worship the ground white people walk on and will suck up to them in a way that black Americans will not do. So it's not because we're lazy. No, we have higher standards. We're not going to kiss the white man's ass. So if we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. Okay, so let me see something. And this whole thing about America being a melting pot. Yeah, someone said worldwide propaganda has foreigners thinking we are lazy and don't want to work. Exactly. I'm tired of that. I'm tired of it. Well, it's like, no, we could say about to foreigners, oh, you just want to come over here and be a slave. You're fine with being a slave. We fought to end that. Um, and now you're, you're lowering our standards. Okay. Um, and, the, and the truth be told, and I'm just going to say, black Americans are respectful when we travel to other people's countries. Like we don't talk bad about Africa. But, oh, I'm, the, I'm in the motherland when really West Africa West Africa is, has some of the worst air quality in the world. They're over there burning garbage. There's no trees. The air is thick with freaking smog. It's disorganized. They're all robbing each other. Can't trust anybody. Black Americans don't come back saying that. They're like, oh, it's so beautiful. I went to the motherland. When you know that Colombia, Mexico, St. Lucia, Cuba, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, and North America all look way better than what you saw in West Africa. Okay, and it's the lowering of standards for us. We lower our standards when we go to those countries, but then we still don't say disrespectful things and we don't look down on people. But people come to beautiful America, and this country is a beautiful country, and they get to get all these things, things they could never get where they're at because of the fight that black Americans made for them. And that's not talked about enough. So the same way that people can post about how, what Haiti has done for the U.S., and I've always been a pro-Haiti person. People know that. Like I have videos where I've talked and given Haiti their flowers. But if we're going to talk about that, then talk about the things that America has done, that black Americans have done, you know, for um, Haitians and other Caribbeans and stuff like that, you know? There needs to be a balanced conversation, you know? So... Um, I know that there's other things I probably want to say, but this video is about to run out, um, on my Instagram. So I might do a part two. Um, I'm going to repost this to my YouTube. If you like the video, please like it, please share it. If you're on Instagram, be sure to follow me on YouTube and vice versa. Um, 
And I feel like there's going to be things I didn't think about that I want to get to, but I think I got to the point. Okay. There are immigrants that are coming here, you know, lowering the bar, being disrespectful, talking um, uh, uh, negatively about us. And I don't ever see them giving us our flowers or thanking us. Okay. So yeah, um, maybe I'll see you guys in a part two. Enjoy the rest of your day. Check out the rest of my videos where I've talked about in more in depth about these topics. I'll put some of them below on YouTube. Thank you for listening. Like it and share it if you want and um, have a good day. <laughs> Bye.